Okay, this is our example for parallel circuits, and the first thing it asks to do, us to do is to find the total resistance. And total resistance is a little more complicated for parallel than it was for series. This is the formula that they give you on your formula chart on section 9. If you want to look at it real quick, that's the formula they give you right there. And then the one I've written above it is how you usually see it in a physics textbook or an electrical textbook. These are basically the same thing. If you're good with math, you can use either one you want to. This one they've just solved for the RT, so you don't have to do the extra steps. You can use either one. I'm going to use this one right here because this is the one they have on your formula chart. All I did was I took R1, R2, and R3, plugged them in here. What you need to do on your calculator is be sure you do this bottom part first, and you need to do each one of these before you add it. Remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, order of operations. Pause the video, plug this in, make sure you can get the right answer now so you don't mess it up on future problems. But when I plug it in, this is the answer I get. Notice that my total resistance in a parallel circuit is lower than my individual ones. It's always going to be lower. If you're not getting a lower resistance here, then you did something wrong. And then they round this off to be 350 ohms. They just round it off. Okay, then number two says, what's the voltage across each component in my circuit? Guess what we're going to use to find it? Ohm's law. Man, we use Ohm's Law a lot. VT equals IT RT. So I know my total voltage is 15 volts right here. Oh, and I don't even need to calculate it because I don't know my current yet. So I'm just going to use my VT is right here, total voltage. And in parallel circuits, make this note at the top. In parallel, the voltage is the same everywhere in our circuit. Remember, in series, the current was the same everywhere. In parallel, the voltage is the same everywhere. So what that means is once I know the voltage total is 15, that means that not only is the voltage total, but voltage 1, voltage 2, voltage 3, they're all 15 volts. So now we're going to do number three where it asks us to find the current through each of the components, and this is where we are going to use Ohm's Law. So I'm going to scoot over here. V total equals I total R total. Do I know V total? Yes, it's 15. I don't know the current, but I do know the resistance total because we found it right here. So we're going to plug it in. Then how do you solve this? It's an algebra problem, so remember you have to divide by this one. Put that in your calculator, and we get that the total current is 0 0.0043 amps, or we're going to change that over to milliamps, move it over three times. So we get 4.3 milliamps. Okay, and it really, I wrote it down wrong just a second ago. It should be 0.043 amps, which is 43 milliamps. Now we're going to find the current at each one of these branches, and we're going to use Ohm's Law at each one. So the first one, Ohm's Law, V1 equals I1, R1. Plug in your volts from right here, because it's the same all the way across. Plug in your ohms from right here. And then solve for the I. Remember, you're going to divide just like we did up here. And get this. You're going to actually get 0 0.031 and then move it over to make milliamps out of it. Please take the time, pause the video, plug this in your calculator, make sure you're getting the same answers I am so that you know how to do it on your activity. And then do the same thing for the other two. Again, we got these ohms from the two branches up here. The volts are the same everywhere. Then we divide so that we can get the currents. 
Okay, now the last part says to verify using Kirchhoff's current law, which you'll remember is on our formula chart over here. And we said that Kirchhoff's current law only works on parallel. It basically says I can just add up the currents in all the branches and it'll equal the total. So here it is. Kirchhoff's current law says add up I1, I2, I3, and we get I total. So I did that here. I took the three currents from right here and I added them up. Plug those in your calculator, pause the video, make sure you get the answer. And did you get 43 ohms? That's what you should have got. It may be off a little, or 43 milliamps. It may be off a little bit because we rounded these numbers in the middle steps, but it should be very close. And that, again, is a little check that we can make sure we got all these correct and it's working out, everything's working in our circuit.